Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that we previously restored a Soyuz space clock that was flown in the Soyuz TM spacecraft. It had some incredible electronics in it, chock full with Soviet ICs. But today we have another version of this clock, courtesy of space collector Steve Jurvetson. It is an older model which was flown on the very first generation of the Soyuz spacecraft, starting in 1967. To me, it looks even more beautiful and appears to be entirely electromechanical. Here you can see the clock on an early Soyuz panel, and here on a later, much more complex panel. Eventually, it gets swapped out with the digital version, which fits in the same panel. By the way, the digital version is still flying in the ISS space station today. Here it is in the Zvezda module. And look, here is the older analog version in the Buran shuttle. So these clocks had a long and distinguished space life. So today is the day we have been given the go-ahead to open it up and try to make it work. And in a channel exclusive first, the clock opening was live streamed for Patreons in glorious potato vision. That turned out to be quite an adventure with the stream lasting almost 7 hours. But out of mercy, I made a 15 minute cut that has the juiciest moments as well as high resolution footage. The timestamps refer to the original stream if you want to see it as it happened. I plan to do a more in-depth video later, but for now, let's relive the clock opening adventure as it actually happened. So today we're going to attempt to get, uh, to get this beautiful Soyuz clock working. I already have uh, my other clock and uh, an HP clock, both on the cesium time source with a big pile of HP equipment to make that work. And as a first, we're going to live stream this. So here's Ken, say, say hi Ken for the camera. Hello. <laughs> And uh, there's a live stream going on uh, for the Patre for the Patreons uh, from my lowly iPhone. So we'll see if I can manage all of this at the same time. Okay, okay. So I have some some looseness here, but not here. Oh, 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 oh. simpler than the, the digital one which has 10 boards filled with chips and all the screws are locked in we're expecting all those screws removed by the end of the live stream <laughs> what that is just absolutely gorgeous And that is astounding. Now somebody needs to make a 3D model of it. That would be so cool. There's a lot of work to be done here. It's, it's a little, a little antiquitera of its own. I am getting worried that this wiring is actually different from the one on our main clock. It's not going to be as simple as we thought. Oh, this is just too good. So the chronometer the, can be pulled, the chronometer button, button can be pulled by the solenoid and then to know which of the three position it's at, you have an encoder right here. These contacts over here. The, the cam switch? Yeah, there are three of them so they can tell you which position you are since it's kind of a sequential thing so I'm going to push on, on, on the relay here on the actuator yeah and it's advanced in the second so that is 
in the, the second advance or the half second advance this one over here is going to advance the mission time uh, and it does not because or it's oh it should be the chronometer I bet you that's the chronometer let's do clear operate yeah bingo do you see the chronometer advancing yep on the bottom very nice okay that's the first thing we need to repair it's extremely sluggish okay got it i i have to confirm it under the binocular but this just the shaft just terminates into a little mushroom thing and the mushroom thing pushes all the rest of the mechanism and it's it's really sticky something really needs to be done for it uh, okay so bear with me i'm going to go under the binocular and see if i can get some insights with black okay so back to mark well so in, you know, what the difference a binocular makes where you can see in 3D. Uh, so I can see it's not a mushroom, it's actually at the other end of the shaft is a nut that appears to be adjustable on the top. There's either a screw that goes in, something like that. I will have to take a picture with a with a counter screw, and it's all locked with the uh, green stuff that you see everywhere. Does this make any sense? So that if I had to pull the shaft, I would have to un unlock this, which seems very difficult. Okay, the good side of things is that I see where I I could put oil right there. And I would probably do it under the binocular too, unless I can get myself in a good light. Okay, so I think the cleanest way would be this. So, like this. I have light coming from there, I can get it from there. Okay, that's gonna work. And very position. This is my very special night oil. Hola. Hello. Okay. Oh, already worked. Fixed. All right, that wasn't too hard. You just have to put the oil at the right place. All right, done. Nice. Look pink. Yep. Reset. that this contact is not working great so that's the contact that would put the chronometer in motion and it's 20 ohms instead of being zero 18 uh, getting somewhere Two. 
That's better. I have made my minimalistic adapter here and if I did it correctly so we'll disconnect this guy and it went back to its own clock and then we are going to make an atomic mechanical clock, a mechatomic clock ok, no such luck why? so I reconverted myself so I have DC pulses so I'm, I'm basically bypassing the 800 hertz supply and I'm just amplifying the pulse directly with the power amplifier here and I'm having 12 volt pulses at the moment and it's not doing a thing DC amps almost no DC amps I cannot do DC circuits anymore longer pulse yeah it tells me 20 volts ah here we go Need more juice. Alright. Alright, be happy. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it short pulses. So. Okay. I think it works. Yeah, no. That was a, that was a little bit anticlimactic. Can you see it on the live stream? I have no idea how my camera is doing. Yeah, it goes up nicely on the live stream, ticking away. So now, if we've done reverse engineering properly, if I do, if I do operate. We are having the chronometer. Nice. Okay, it's it's going there. So you know I should do a live stream of that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Your atomic clock via the Russian uh, the Russian Soyuz uh, space clock <laughs> dial. <laughs> Oh sure, that works. Yeah, so I, I actually dialed it about right. It needs half an amp. Okay, turn it off. Plug it in. I still have pulses. That should still work. So now it's cleared. So it's not advancing. I put it to operate. Next one is stop. And the one after that is clear. Woohoo! Well, you will see that. So interesting, the start is not until you release. The stop is immediate. And the reset is immediate too.